Well, hey guys, it's time we revisit the topic of hydrolyzed collagen peptide dietary supplements. I have many videos on my channel about these supplements. Do they actually work to improve the skin? Do they actually work for the hair, the nails? I'm going to link some of those videos down below in the description box so you have more background information. But in today's video, I'm actually going to be busting a handful of myths that I see perpetuated regarding hydrolyzed collagen peptide dietary supplements. First of all, collagen. It is a very abundant protein found in various connective tissues in animals. And of course, it's super abundant in the skin. It provides structural support to the skin along with hyaluronic acid, as well as elastin. But as we age, there is a decline in collagen quality and quantity in our skin, and this is what contributes to the appearance of aging skin in the form of wrinkles, increased laxity, sallowness, fragility. So wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just ingest collagen and have it go back into our skin. Fortunately, you can't just eat collagen and have it go into your skin because it's this very large protein and it's not digestible. Herein comes the role for collagen peptides. These are actually small, little, tiny fragments of digested collagen. These are produced actually from collagen naturally sourced from animals, namely bone, maybe ligaments. There's a lot of interest and in research out there looking at taking hydrolyzed collagen peptides. And a lot of the research out there really does show promise for these supplements improving moisture content in the skin, reducing wrinkles, improving skin elasticity, giving an overall improvement in brightness, a decrease in pore size. These studies, while compelling, they do suffer many limitations, including small size and heterogeneity, meaning each study does things a lot different from another study. So what are some myths that I hear around hydrolyzed collagen peptide supplements. Number one myth is just eat gelatin. It's the same thing. It is not. Gelatin is collagen that has been denatured and partially hydrolyzed, meaning it's not been broken into those tiny little digestible peptides. That's not to say that gelatin is bad um, or that it's useless, but if you are specifically seeking to achieve the outcomes demonstrated in the studies, and again, they have their limitations, but if that's what you're looking for, well, you're gonna actually be missing out if you just go with gelatin. Because gelatin is not those small little peptide fragments, um, it's a much, they're much larger fragments. You're not going to be, it's not the same thing. So you're not going to be pursuing the same outcome. Gelatin, in contrast to hydrolyzed collagen peptides, has some properties to it that make it desirable, namely as a food additive in that it has the property of, well, gelling. So yeah, that's, that's an advantage of gelatin over hydrolyzed peptides. This, the second myth is similar to the first, and that is just eat bone broth. It's the same thing as hydrolyzed collagen peptides. It's not. Bone broth is made basically by simmering bones in water with a little bit of added vinegar to liberate um, amino acids, nutrients like calcium and phosphorus. And the reason why bone broth is not going to yield the same outcomes or is unlikely to yield the same outcomes as hydrolyzed collagen peptides, again, boils down to the fact that it is not enriched actually in these collagen peptides. The constitution of bone broth, both commercially available bone broth preparations as well as um, a basic recipe for bone broth, and the mean concentration of key amino acids found in hydrolyzed collagen peptides, the proline, hydroxyproline, glycine, the ones that you want for the intended outcome, very low actually in bone broth compared to hydrolyzed collagen peptides. Bone broth is something you enjoy eating by all means, but I do think that a lot of wellness accounts, influencers overhype bone broth, um, when in reality, the nutrient profile is not that great, um, you know, to underscore what they are claiming, I will say. The amino acid composition, as well as the micronutrient composition of bone broth, varies tremendously. It's going to vary depending on the animal, the age of the animal, the preparation methods. Just keep that in mind, because a lot of 
wellness accounts that sell bone broth supplements, you know, they're gonna over oversell on the nutritional benefits of it. Number three myth, just eat protein, just eat more animal-based protein. Surely you'll be getting enough of the amino acids that you find in these hydrolyzed collagen supplements. Just eat some tough cuts of meat, like brisket or pot roast. Um, again, it all boils down to the fact, no pun intended, <laughs> So we're talking about cooking, that this is not going to actually provide you with reliable levels of the hydrolyzed collagen peptides, those small, available, digestible, absorbable peptides that lead to the presumed benefits that you are seeking in terms of the skin. You know, eating more meat is not the same thing as pursuing hydrolyzed collagen peptides. Another myth that I hear is like, well, this is all BS because surely you're just gonna consume these peptides and they're just gonna get broken down in your digestive tract, digested just like any other protein and absorbed in the body. They're not gonna have any, it's not any different than just making sure that you have enough protein in your diet. And that's not true either. When you eat you know, peptides, proteins, that they are broken down into amino acids which are absorbed into the circulation. Yes, that is true. But also, your body can absorb peptides intact as they are across the small intestine into the circulation. And that has actually been demonstrated with hydrolyzed collagen peptide supplements, that they can, in fact, lead to an increase in hydroxyproline proline peptide levels in the plasma. So they definitely can be absorbed. I think where people get led astray is they really laser focus in on hydrolyzed collagen peptide supplements as a protein, as protein. And they're really, I mean, yes, but at the same time, they're actually a functional ingredient. Given the tone of this video up until this point, you're probably suspicious thinking that I'm here to sell you on some kind of collagen peptide, especially if you're new here. If you're new here, I am not a huge proponent of collagen peptides. I'm actually kind of neutral on them, and I'll get into more of the myths, and hopefully that will explain that to you in a moment. I have no financial ties to the um, collagen peptide industry. <laughs> um, all right, so this is the next myth, is, is for people who are more gung-ho about them. Um, a lot of people um, are under the impression that hydrolyzed collagen peptide supplements are good for you. They are good for you. They are a good supplement for your overall nutrition, for your overall health. And I would strongly encourage you to rethink that because hydrolyzed collagen peptide supplements are just that. They are dietary supplements. Dietary supplements are not regulated like medications are. They are not required to disclose to you potential risks, adverse effects, any potential interactions that it might have with medications. And if you go through the dietary collagen supplements, there are a lot of them that are not super transparent about where the peptides are coming from. Is it fish? Is it pork? Is it um, cow derived? This is really important because some people have severe allergies to say fish, for example. They're gonna wanna avoid dietary supplements from fish. Um, collagen peptide supplements, while generally well tolerated, they can and do have side effects. I already alluded to the fact that you know allergic reactions are a major concern. There have been cases of severe allergic reactions to, to collagen supplements. Also, common adverse effects are headache, digestive upset, bloating, gastrointestinal reflux. And there's also the pressing concern regarding dietary supplements as a whole and contamination or inclusion of things not disclosed on the label. Um, this is why I recommend if you're going to use a dietary supplement, choose one that has some sort of third-party testing associated with it, NSF certified for sport, for example, but many dietary supplements have been found to be adulterated with contaminants. And with regards to collagen peptides, there's concern for heavy metal contamination, but I wanna draw your attention to this, um, in the fall of 2023, this tennis player, I just recently came across this because I don't follow tennis, um, Simona Halep. She failed um, a drug test for WADA, which is, you know, in professional sport, athletes have to be tested to make sure that they're not 
using banned substances, performance enhancing drugs. She came up positive for Roxadustat, which is a banned substance because what it is, is it makes your body essentially make more red blood cells. So it gives you a competitive advantage. You have more carry oxygen carrying capacity, you, you know, are faster, but it's also can cause serious um, health effects like, you know, strokes. She had been taking a collagen supplement and they found out that the collagen supplement she was taking contained undisclosed um, roxidostat, you know, this banned substance. The fact that this was found in the collagen supplement, that should give everyone pause with regards to dietary supplements because that can cause serious adverse health effects. I pointed this out before too in some of my videos on supplements that cause acne. Um, certain muscle building supplements, you know, marketed as like protein supplements, they have been found to be adulterated with anabolic steroids, giving people acne and of course failing these drug tests if you're in professional sport. So, you know, be aware of, of that when it comes to dietary supplements. The other myth that I hear is that this is a good source of protein. Hydrolyzed collagen peptides are, you know, primarily skewed to having proline, hydroxyproline, glycine. They don't actually contain tryptophan and they're very low in branched chain amino acids. Um, and specifically, if you are looking to include more protein in your diet for athletic reasons, for muscle building, hydrolyzed collagen peptides are not the source that you want um, because they're incomplete. They lack the branched chain amino acids, no tryptophan, which is an essential amino acid. So they're really not, you know, you really shouldn't, if you're somebody who just wants to get a little bit more protein in your diet, you struggle to get protein in your diet and you wanna to turn to a protein powder, a protein supplement, I would steer you away from um, collagen peptides because that's really not, I mean, you're really selling yourself short there. You're not getting a good amino acid profile. The final collagen myth is that, well, collagen creams are completely useless. You, you know, you're not gonna get collagen from a cream. Useless depends on how you're looking at things. So collagen in creams, moisturizers, serums, it works to improve moisture retention in skin's outermost layer. So it's definitely not useless. I mean, if you think collagen is useless in creams, you also have to say glycerin is useless. You also have to say hyaluronic acid is useless. You have to say that, I mean, name your favorite humectant and call it useless. And that's not true because these ingredients, they help with moisture retention. And honestly, at the end of the day, that's actually one of the most important ways in which skincare products work to your advantage uh, by improving moisture content and skin's outermost layer. So, then def so collagen in products definitely can be helpful for moisturizing the skin. Now, it's way too large to ever have a fighting chance of getting into your skin and aiding in replenishment of collagen. So, you know, don't, don't look at it that way, but it's definitely not completely useless. In fact, it's even included in a newer prescription formulation of tretinoin altrano lotion for its moisturizing properties to help cut down on dryness and irritation that people often experience with tretinoin. All right, so those are some uh, myths regarding collagen, collagen supplements specifically. Um, but I will end by giving you some of my thoughts regarding the landscape of literature regarding diet dietary collagen supplements and skin. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there is there are research studies, trials showing an improvement in hydration, in wrinkles, um, in smoothness, elasticity, decrease in pore size. As far as the mechanism, few things. Yes, you're getting some amino acids that are detected in the plasma after you ingest these supplements and make their way to the skin to serve for the building blocks of collagen. That's part, part of how they may work. But the other part is that peptide that is absorbed in the small intestine makes its way in the circulation, through the circulation to the dermis. It's thought that the little peptide, once it gets there, what it does is it binds to receptors on those fibroblast cells and encourages them to make new healthy collagen. Now this hasn't really been rigorously proven, but that is the current working theory as to how these work and why it is so specific to the hydrolyzed collagen peptide because again, if you go back to the other things that people might wanna try like gelatin, bone broth, or meats, you're not actually going to get significant levels of those peptides. 
Now, I will point this out, that there is a lot of heterogeneity. I said this at the beginning, there's a lot of heterogeneity in these studies. Um, yes, there was recently, a few years ago, a big meta-analysis looking at all the studies that concluded that these supplements can have some benefit for the skin, but critiques of that meta-analysis really, really hone in on the fact that there's so much heterogeneity in the different studies. Like they're all using different types of collagen peptides from different sources. Um, they're reporting on different things. They're using different measures. So the overall meta-analysis is, is actually really poor quality. And even though the meta-analysis says, oh, this is what these studies show, the, the meta-analysis itself it has some problems with it. The other thing we don't know is to what extent everyone benefits from taking these. Um, it, it may be the kind of thing that really only more mature skin types benefit from due to, um, you know, lack of collagen. Or is there, you know, some tipping point? Does it is it does dose vary by age? There are a lot of unknowns. People often ask me, what's the best type of collagen? Liquid, capsule, gummy? Who knows? Who knows? These are questions for which research has not tested or provided answers. Again, there's a lot of variability out there. So keep all of that in mind. So when I say I'm neutral on the collagen supplements, I, I, you know, I'm not, I understand people taking them. They're not complete BS. There's definitely research supporting that they have the potential to work, um, but I'm not gonna push you guys to use them. And again, I decline any sponsorship opportunities for these because A, I don't use them myself, and B, I'm, you know, I'm on the fence. So I'm not gonna promote something that I don't 100% believe in. Let me know in the comments though, do you take these? I know a lot of you guys do, and a lot of you guys have said that you appreciate benefit, but some of you have also reported that you've experienced horrible side effects. Share your stories in the comments. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, on the end slide I'm gonna put one of my last collagen supplement videos. You can check that out if you want more on the research behind these. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.